Hi everybody, my name is Christine and I'm delighted to be with you today on this special day, Crinian and Oak, to do some creative science. You've probably heard that we're going to make ice cream. I hope where you are it's a lovely sunny day, but if it's not, ice cream will still be a nice tasty thing to have. We have an extra challenge today. As well as making the ice cream, we're going to all make our freezers. Each one of you make your very own freezer so you can freeze your own ice cream. I can see your faces looking a bit surprised and wondering how possibly could I do that? The kind of freezer that you're thinking of, well, it's probably made of metal and plastic, like the one you have in your kitchen, and it probably needs electricity to power it. That's not the kind of freezer we're going to make today. That would be pretty tricky. Very complicated piece of equipment. Those kind of freezers, they've been used for about 100 years. But ice cream dates back way before that. Electricity was discovered about 250 years ago and lots and lots of appliances have been built to use electricity and we use it for so many things these days. But before electricity, people were able to do lots of things. You just wonder how they were able to do it when we are so reliant on electricity these days. Way, way back, 2,000 years ago, people knew how to make ice cream. They didn't live in a cold place. In fact, they lived in Rome. And some of you who've been there on your summer holidays might know that it's a very, very warm place. And probably you'd only really want ice cream on a very warm day. So those clever Romans, they knew how to make ice cream. What we're going to do next we're going to be time travellers. We're going to go back in time to Roman times and find out a bit about what those clever Romans did. Hi. So, I've travelled back in time, 2,000 years, and here I am in ancient Rome. Busy place to be. A lot of hustle and bustle. People all around the place going around their business. A lovely hot, warm, sunny day, and feels like a good day for ice cream. How could we get ice cream? What could we do to cool ourselves down? What's the coldest thing we can think of? The coldest thing I can think of is ice or snow. So, in ancient Rome, during the summer, snow would be a difficult thing to find. Not a chance of getting it in the city. But, the Romans, they knew that in the Alps, way up in the north of Italy, and because the Alps are so high, that even though it was summer, there would still be some snow there. So the Romans sent their workers off to the Alps to collect trailers full of snow. They brought those trailer loads back and in the Roman houses they had a special cellar or room where they could store that snow. You might expect that to be a waste of time because snow melts in the heat. But actually, 
When you've compacted it, think of if you made a snowman. Even though the weather would warm up and the snow from the rest of your garden would be gone, that snowman, maybe not looking quite as pristine as it was when you made it, but the snowman would still be there. Perhaps his head would have fallen a bit off onto his shoulder. But those two balls in the body and his head, it takes them a long, long time to thaw. So the Romans knew about that and they brought the ice back from the Alps and they kept it for making ice cream during the summer. Now, would ice on its own be enough to make a freezer? Well, what we're going to do next, we're going to pop into a Roman house. The house is in a place called Ostia, quite close to Rome. We're going to pop in there and we're going to have a look to see how they made their freezers. Here I am again. Now I am in Ostia inside a Roman villa. It looks very different to the kind of houses that we're used to living in today. So what we're going to do next, we are going to find out from the lady of the house how to make a freezer. So while I was in Ostia exploring that Roman villa and their downstairs their cellar but they kept that ice. I found information, a little booklet, explaining how they made their freezers. They had tried with just ice on its own and they found that that didn't work. They found that they needed another chemical to go in with it and when the two were together something amazing happened. First, the ice, to get my ice. And I'm just going to empty it out into my bowl. Imagine this is the cellar in the Roman villa. Next door to the cellar is another little, I suppose, a little nook. And in there, had some white powder. Turned out it was table salt or what we call scientists we call it sodium chloride. The instructions said that if you mix the two together that an amazing thing happens. That it gets colder and colder and colder and it can change things from being a liquid into a solid just like you want for your freezer. Now, we're going to try and see if we can make a freezer. Well, when I say we, for this section, actually, I'd like you just to watch, and maybe you might try it later, but I haven't put the bits and pieces you need for this part of the experiment into the list, because it's just a bit of background information and a test to see, are we able to make a freezer? We're going to try making our freezer in these two cans. And we're going to do two slightly different things. In this can, we're going to just put ice. In this one, we're going to put ice and salt together, just like they said in Ostia. Scientists have a name for it when they do an experiment like this. We're looking to see I suppose you'd say our question is, does salt make ice colder? That's our question. And the way we're going to find out is we're going to have this one with no salt and we're going to have this one with salt. Scientists would say that the one without the salt is a control. That's the one you know, we're comparing it to to see, does the salt really have an effect? Now, scientists in their laboratories would have a thermometer and they could put one thermometer into this one and another thermometer into this one. But most 
people in their homes don't have thermometers for doing that. And even if they did, the kind of thermometer they might have at home is usually for measuring the temperature of your body. The temperature of your body is 37 degrees centigrade. And the temperature we're going to get in here, well, we're going to start at zero degrees centigrade, and we're hoping we're going to go down as low, actually, as minus 16 degrees centigrade. So, when we're talking about that, that actually reminds me, there's a different scale that some people use for measuring temperature. Especially, they use it in America. It's called the Fahrenheit scale. Now, Mr. Fahrenheit, when he was devising his scale, well, some people think that he used for his zero the very cold temperature that he got when he mixed ice and salt together. His zero, if you convert it into our Celsius or centigrade scale, is around about minus 18. So that's thought to be why he picked that to be his zero. He thought that the very coldest thing you could get was mixing ice and salt together. Now, let's go back to our thermometer that we don't have. So what are we going to do? To, how are we going to know if this one with the salt is actually colder than this one without. So what I'm going to get you to do is, I'll put these down for a second, I'm going to get you to have a think. Have you ever opened an ice pop and licked an ice pop that has been so cold that your tongue stuck to it? It's a horrible thing when it happens. It's a really sore thing to happen. But it only happens to really, really cold. So, if your ice pop is really, really, really cold, it can be so cold that it turns the saliva on your tongue into ice. And that saliva, changed from liquid into solid, makes a kind of a glue and sticks the ice pop to your tongue. Oh, horrible thing to happen. Well, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to make pretend tongue and I'm going to see if we can get one or both of these to stick to it. If one does and not the other then we'll know for sure that the one that sticks is colder than the one that doesn't. I'm going to make that tongue out of a piece of kitchen roll. Here's my piece of kitchen roll. Is it like a tongue? Well, not really. It feels a little bit different. Tongue? Yeah, I suppose it's soft, but my tongue is wet. And at the moment, this is dry. And I don't think it will stick if it's dry. So we're going to have to wet it. I have some water. And I'm going to pour some water onto it. I don't need very much, just a small bit of water and I'm going to put a little bit of water on and I'm going to fold it over, pat it down and pat it down again and open it all back up and hopefully this is all just a bit wet, much much more like a tub. Now, I'm ready to try and make our steel ice pops. I'm going to put this down. I'm going to get my two cans. And I'm actually going to make it a slight little bit wetter. So that we have plenty of saliva on this tongue. And for sure, you could try this at home another day. There, it's quite wet now. That is good. Now, I'm going to put my test one on this end, and I'm going to put my control on this end, and I'm going to put the ice in next.
we have to make sure that everything is fair. So if I put an ice cube into this one, I have to put an ice cube into this one, and so on. And one each. And one each. And these ones have stuck, okay. And one each. And that's probably enough. So now I've got that it's about a third full of ice. This one is complete, that's just going to be ice. And into this one, we're going to put our salt. Now you need quite a lot of salt. I could put it in with spoons, but I'm actually going to just shake it in and maybe count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Now, I'm going to leave these and see what happens. The ice is going to melt in both, for sure. But I'm hoping that this one is going to get so cold that it will stick to the pretend tone that we've made down here. And that this one, I think, will not. Anyway, while we're waiting for that to happen, I'm going to go back into the lab and see, can we make some ice cream? We'll start making our ice cream mix. So what I'd like you to do now is get all your bits and pieces ready. We're going to get started. Now, we're all ready to make our ice cream. Today, we're going to make our ice cream in a plastic bag. The kind of bags that I usually use for it are tiny Ziploc bags, just like this one. You might not have one like that at home. So, I'm also going to try, and I know it'll work perfectly well, using a sandwich bag. We'll make two batches side by side, and then you'll see exactly what you need to do for at home. Our container for our ice cream. The next thing we're going to think about is the recipe. Now I asked you to bring along some milk today. Some of you might have different kinds of milk. Some of you might have soy milk or almond milk, whatever you normally use. This is dairy milk. If you don't like milk at all and you would just like to have a sort of a slushy, then you could do orange juice, or apple juice, or any kind of fruit juice. The next thing then, after our milk, I asked you to bring some sugar. This here is my sugar. I like to use icing sugar. It's not essential. But what I like about the icing sugar is it's made of very small particles. And they dissolve quite quickly in the milk when we're doing our mixing. I also said you need to bring a flavouring. I've brought a whole range of flavourings today. I've got some drinking chocolate that we can use for chocolate flavouring. I brought some coffee in case we'd like coffee flavour. I have vanilla. I have strawberry and I have raspberry. I also have some strawberry milkshake. And you can use that instead of real strawberries. It's nice summer's days now, but in the winter, if there's no strawberries available, you can use something like strawberry milkshake. Now you might have some other ideas. You might like something fancy like mango. Maybe you have chocolate chips. Maybe you have a few flavors. You can mix them together whatever you fancy. I can go and make different flavours in my different bags. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our dry ingredients into the bag. Our sugar is going to be first. We need about half a teaspoon of sugar. So, if my 
a teaspoon, pop it in, and I'm going to try and get about half a teaspoon out. Now, there's my half a teaspoon, certainly fairly flat, not a heap of teaspoon, and I'm going to put that into my bag. My next bag, hopefully you're all starting to do this at home as well, and so that you can keep up with me, if I'm doing two, that usually works out a bit better. I'm going to put half a teaspoon of sugar into this bag. Well, actually, I'm going to put a little bit more into this bag because I'm going to make a fruit flavour in this. I'm going to use one of my fruits, either strawberry or raspberry, and I found that I needed to be a little bit sweeter if I'm using fruit compared to if I'm making chocolate. So, this time, I'm going to put in a spoonful of sugar. Yeah. Next thing I'm going to do is my flavourings. For this bag, I'm going to make chocolate vanilla ice cream. And for this one, I'm going to make raspberry. For my chocolate, I'm going to get my chocolate flavour. If you're using whatever flavour it is you're using, get it out and get it ready now. And I'm going to put about half a spoon of chocolate powder in. Here's my half spoon of chocolate powder. And I'm going to pop that into my bag. I hope you're all getting on well. Put that to the side. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add a second flavour with my chocolate. I'm going to add some vanilla. You only need a tiny bit of the vanilla essence. And I'm going to put in two drops. Being a scientist, I have a special tool for doing this. It's called a pipette. You probably don't have one of those at home. If you do, that's fantastic. If you don't, don't worry. I'm going to show you now in a second how you can manage without. If you do, Take your pipette, pop it in, squeeze it. As you let go, the liquid comes up inside. I'm going to put two drops of this in. Just tiny raindrop sized drops. There we go. I'll re return the remainder into my bottle. And now I'm going to show you what to do if you haven't got a pipette. So if you haven't got a pipette, pour a tiny bit of your flavouring into the lid, the cap, and the bottle. If you're pouring it directly into the bag, the chances are you might over pour it and get too much. But this way, the very most you're going to put in is what I have here. You put the bottle down, I'm going to change hands so I have it in the hand that I write with. And now I'm going to carefully let the two drops come out. I don't want to pour it all in. I'm going to just pour it gently and sometimes you need to tap the top to get a drop to form. Here, oh, two, I think two have gone in, that's fine. I still have a bit left. I'm going to return that into the bottle. Don't worry if your flavour is on the side of the bag, if it hasn't mixed in yet. That's what's happened with mine. When we put the milk in, that's all going to be fixed. In my next bag, I'm going to put some raspberries. I have them here in my little dish, and I'm going to put three of them in. That looks like a nice one. And I'm going to go for this nice big one as well. So, there they are in the bag. Next job is our milk. We want to have 30 millilitres of milk. Now that's quite a small bit of milk. And I'm going to measure it for my ones using one of these tiny measuring cups. The chances are you don't have one of those cups at home 
and you're going to be using a spoon. If you're going to use a teaspoon, each teaspoonful holds five milliliters. So you'll need to do six teaspoons of milk into your bag. I would recommend that you do them into another container first. So you pour your milk. Let's have a go. I'm going to do it like this. So if I put too much in, then it'll only be into my cup. One, a tiny little bit extra went in that time, but that will be fine. I'm going to do this for five more times. Two. Three. Four. You could use a bigger spoon, you could use a dessert spoon. This here is a dessert spoon and it holds 10 millilitres of milk. So you don't need to use three of those. Off you go doing your milk. While you're doing that, I'm going to do my second lot of milk for my second bag of ice cream. into the bag can be a bit tricky. So if you have somebody there, a brother or a sister or your mum or dad with you, a good thing to do is get them to hold the bag while you do the pouring. If you haven't, then I'm going to suggest you just go very carefully, hold the bag, maybe you might want to put it down on the table because it actually feels remarkably heavy when you get the milk into it. I'm going to pour this one in here now. That one. And because this bag has a zip on it, I'm going to close it now. I'm going to squish the air out because I don't want that much air in it, like I can help it. And now I close over the bag. That's that one all set. The one that's probably more like the one you're using is this one. So I'm going to pour my milk into that. And now, hopefully we're all ready for the mixing part. Have you caught up with me at home? I hope you have. So hold your bag like this. And what I want you to do is I want you to gently squeeze it, very gently so that you don't squish a hole in it. Gently squeeze it. And I want you to keep doing that until it's all the one colour. Sometimes if you have chocolate powder, you need to just tip it up and down to get some of the bit, the powder from the bottom to come up and come up through it. With the raspberries, if I squish too hard, I'd make a hole in the bag, and that I certainly do not want. Yeah. There's that one, ready to go into the freezer. We're going to use this cup as our freezer. And what I want you to do, just for the moment, is to put it in like this and put the top bit over like that to one side. While you're doing that, I'm going to do my mixing in my chocolate one. And you can see that I've got, the colours are patchy. There's brown patches and there's dark brown patches and light brown patches. So I'm going to just tip it up and down and keep moving it around until they all becomes the same colour. You'll see now that the vanilla essence that you could see before has all mixed in fine and because I have it closed I can lift it right up. I don't usually take it right to the very top just in case it was leaking up there 
And I'll just try and make it all the one colour. If you have something like chocolate chips in yours, it won't all be the one colour because you'll see the chocolate chips, but that's absolutely fine. That's fine. If you were doing strawberry and you had lumps of it, then you might have strawberry ripple, and that would be good too. That would be good. Now I think I'm just about ready to put this one into the freezer. I'm going to just Oh yeah, I've got tiny bits of chocolate left, but they're not quite fully mixed in. But I think I'm going to say that'll be fine. The freezer I'm going to use for this is this cup here. And I'm going to put it in here. The reason I've chosen this cup is so that you at home will be able to see through it and see what's happening inside. Though I'm sure your situation will be much more like this with a mug like this. Okay, so before we put our ice cream into the freezer that we're going to make now in a second, let's go back to our test and see how it has worked out. So, this one here is our control, the one that just has the ice. And this one here is our test. It has the ice and the salt. Now, when I look on the outside of them first, I can see a difference. This one here has condensation on the outside of it. What is condensation? Well, you probably know, and you've seen it before, if you take things out of the fridge, they're very cold, and water droplets form on the outside. Where does that water come from? Well, it comes from the air, actually. If you imagine a puddle on the ground, that puddle doesn't stay forever, it dries up. And as it's drying up, what that means is water molecules jump out of it and they are in the air, on their way up to the clouds. So the air has water molecules in it. When the air gets cold, it's not able to hold as many water molecules as warm air can. So in the cold area around here, the cold surface and the cold air, some of the water molecules come out of the air and they condense on the can. Now let's have a look at the second one. The second one, the one with the ice and salt together, it's got frost at the bottom. Can you see? It's all white. And I can scrape my fingernail in it and scrape it off. I think that must be because the surface here is so cold that not only has it got condensation, but it has turned those water molecules into ice. Let's go back now and see our test and see has it worked? Has this tongue frozen and stuck like glue to either of these cans. I'm going to try lifting this one first. And no, that one definitely is not stuck. How about this one? Oh, I think this might have been successful. There, this one has stuck. There's ice down the side here. There must be ice on the bottom here as well. And this tongue stuck. I can pull it off but it's stuck and I can this ice. Can you hear it? Ice in there. So it looks to me for sure that the ice with the salt has made a difference. It's had an effect and this one is much colder than that. So we've got a kind of a crude thermometer that shows yes definitely there's salt there, it makes a colder temperature than if there's ice on its own. We're ready now to make our own freezers. So I'm going to get out my ice. You might need to run to the freezer to get yours because it melts very quickly if it's left out. Now 
I'm going to just take it out of the tray and put it into this bowl. into our bags. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to be spooning the ice cream out of our bags. That's the next time we open our bags, the ice cream will be made. But, so now, make the freezer, it goes on the outside of those bags. So what we're going to do, your bag should look something like this. Your mix right down the bottom. And I want you to fold the bag over to the side. We know from the freezers that we made, the examples in the steel cans that we need to have ice and salt. We definitely don't want to get salt inside into our bag because that would not be tasty. So we're going to start putting some ice in. I'm going to put ice on this side and then I'll turn it over and put ice on the other side. It's important that your bag is right down near the bottom of your cup. We can probably see it better with this one. We're going to put the ice on either side, one this side, one this side, this side, and so on. And because we want the ice to be touching the sides of the bag and the sides of the cup. If the bag was just sitting on top of the ice, then it's much harder to get it all to cool down. So, we have to put ice in here, I'm going to get a piece and put it in this side. Then I want you to fold over your bag, opening over to the other side, and put a cube in the other side. You can go back again. Another one. And then back and put in a fourth one. I'm thinking four is probably enough. If you did think your cup was very big and you wanted to put another one, you could come back and just put another one if your ice cubes were smaller. And then that's the ice done. While you're busy doing yours, I'm going to do my second cup. This cup is slightly smaller. I think I'll only be able to fit three cubes of ice. One on that side. Put the opening part over, although it's not quite so important here when it's sealed. Put the other one down there, so you can see that the ice cream mix is down below where the ice is. And another one. Oh, this is stuck, stuck together. There we go. So there's three in, and I can see in this one that all of my ice cream mix is surrounded by ice. Hopefully you're getting on well at home doing that. The next step is to put in the salt and we're going to do that in just exactly the same way. I'm going to leave it on the table while I'm doing it and I'm going to fold my bag across and get out my salt. We're going to go for four spoonfuls of salt and more is better. So don't worry if you overflow your spoons, that will be fine. It's not like you can have too much. So I'm going to pour in, turn my spoon up, a little bit's gone over the edge, that's fine. One on that side. Now I'm going to carefully lift up my bag, just like we did when we were doing the ice, and put it over this side, because it's especially important I don't get this in. The ice will have diluted it, my ice cream mix, if it got in, but the salt would make it taste disgusting. I can hear it crackling in there, just like I heard it when we made the other freezer. Back this side. And now a fourth one. There we go. And that's all ready for the next step. While you're catching up, I'll just make up this, do this one here. Oh, just as though my bag was closed. There's a bit of a spill there. Two. Three. 
right? freezer made. The next thing we have to do is we have to shake it. So I'm going to hold it at the very tippy top like this for shaking it. On your one I'm going to say just roll the bag around a little bit and you're going to hold yours like this. I'm going to try to do the two of them together. It's important that you hold it at the very top. Remember what we saw with the freezer a little while ago? That down the bottom gets really, really, really cold. It mightn't be so bad on this cup, where it's quite a thick cup, but this one will definitely, ice will form on the outside of it. And we'll check that again now in a couple of minutes. And if you're holding it down very low, down at the bottom, then your skin could stick to it, and that's not very pleasant. So we'll hold it at the top, and we're going to shake. We're going to shake for 50. So I'm going to get started and I'm going to shake backwards and forwards like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now there's two reasons why we shake. The first is, if we didn't shake, the ice cream mix that was at the edge of our bag would be just in contact with the ice and the salt, and it would cool down, but the bit in the middle wouldn't be hard to get it to cool. So by mixing, it all mixes, it stir, by shaking it mixes and it all stirs around and that means that the bit in the middle gets cooled down as fast as the bit on the outside. I think if I hadn't been chatting and continued counting, I probably would have got to about 35 now. So I'm going to pick up from there. 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Now, there's a second reason that we shake. And the second reason is because ice cream has very, very, very tiny crystals in it. If we didn't shake, long crystals would grow, and that would make the ice cream crunchy. Crunchy ice cream, that's not what we're looking for. It's always nice and smooth. So hopefully this shaking has made nice small crystals. I must be nearly at 50, so let's go 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Okay, I'm going to have a look at mine. I'm going to hold mine up, and I'm going to have a feel at the bottom. I can see some ice on the outside. I'm just going to scrape my fingernail on it. Yep, there's ice on the outside of my container. So I'm pretty optimistic that this will have turned into ice cream. When I move my cup backwards and forwards, I can see. Now I know you won't be able, because your cup most likely is not transparent. I can see that the, salt, the salty water is moving backwards and forwards, but I can see that my brown chocolate mix is staying. It's holding its shape. I'm going to take it out and have a look. So, oh, a bit of ice was stuck, that's okay. I can see now that this is a solid. It no longer takes up the shape of the container when I change the shape, when I move the container. So if I, like this, we don't have a triangle, it's just staying exactly where it is. Oh, there's a tiny bit of it hasn't quite frozen yet. Okay. Now, I'm going to put it back into the freezer and I'm going to lift a bit of ice and put it inside it because it hasn't quite frozen. I'm going to get a little more of a shake. We'll go for another 10 and then hopefully it will be shaken. 
While that is happening, I'm going to explain to you a little bit about the ice and salt and how that unusual thing happens that it gets so cold. Because you probably think, oh, that ice has melted. And absolutely, that ice has melted. And we think of things that melt, we think that they've got warmer and they melt. If you had a bar of chocolate and you put it in your pocket, it warmed up, or even if you left out in the sun, it would melt it. And it would cause it would take in heat from around it and it would melt it. Now, something similar is happening with the salt and the ice. But what's happening is as it, the ice melts, it takes in heat from all around it. But the salt molecules, they get in between the, the ice molecules or the water molecules and they stop it from refreezing. It keeps taking in more heat from all around it here and inside from the, the ice cream mix in your bag. And to do that, as it does, it takes in the heat, it actually cools those, it takes the heat away from them and it cools them down. And the salt just stops the very cold water from turning back into ice because it's in the way and it can't make those nice ice crystals. So, let's have a look again. Hopefully we're ready for eating this time. Oh, that is looking good. I think we're all set for eating. Now I'm going to show you how I recommend to eat it in this one. The one that is more most likely to be like yours. So, unwrap your bag and I want you to fold it back over your cup like this. We're going to try and keep all the ice, or the, uh, the um, salt on the outside and we're going to, it's icy cold, that's why I'm saying ice, it is icy cold, there might even be some ice, there is some ice on the outside of my mug. Interesting. So I'm just going to pull this out gradually and gradually. And hopefully, inside in here, you can see that we've got some ice cream. It's holding its own shape. It's not changing to fill the shape of the bag. I am going to have a little taste and see how we've done. Oh, it's very cold, actually, in here. It's going to be hard to... I'm going to it's very, very cold. Let's see if I can get a little bit to come off. There we go. I'm going to have a taste to see what I think. That is very good. That tastes delicious. And it has nice small crystals, not crunchy. I can have the pips in it and the raspberries, but mm, that is good. I'm going to, you could take it out now and eat it. You could lift the bag out. Oh, maybe it's stuck on the outside, hasn't it? But the heat from your hand is going to warm it up pretty quickly. So, you don't really want that to happen. You could leave it in the bag, but you could lift it out like this, and you could even nibble it without a spoon, if you liked, a bit like an ice pot. Oh, I'm going to have a look at my other one, my chocolatey one here. Open it up, and you should fold this bag back, again, to keep the salt from getting in. And I'm going to, yeah, this one's not quite as hard, and I'm going to, mmm. That is very good. That is very good. But not being quite so hard makes it more creamy. Like that. So, hopefully you've had good success with yours and you're all eating yours at home now. If you haven't, don't worry. I'm going to tell you a few tips that might help you if it hasn't worked out for you. So I hope your ice cream has worked at home. But some people might not have changed ice cream mix into ice cream just yet. And when an experiment doesn't work out in science, we try and work out what could be wrong and why it hasn't worked. So I'm going to say to you, if yours hasn't worked yet, put it back into your freezer. If you need two cups, you could take it out of one cup, put the bag into a new cup, and then pour the ice and the salt and the very cold water in beside it, making sure you don't get it inside the bag. But 
do keep it in the freezer while we're thinking about what could have gone wrong. The most likely thing to have gone wrong is that you have put in too much milk. When you're measuring it out, it's hard to get just 30 mils, it's a very small amount. And the more you have, the longer it will take for it all to change from the temperature that you started down to a free to freeze. So just give it a bit more time and shake for another 50. Another possibility is that you put in too much sugar. Sugar inside of the milk acts as an antifreeze, just the same way as the salt acts in the water. So if you have enough of it there, it changes the temperature at which the milk will freeze. One thing you could do is you could open your bag, put a little bit more milk in. Now I know it's going to take longer to freeze the end, but just like the instructions of what I suggested if you have too much milk, just a little bit more time and then shake until you count up to 100. You might have too much flavour, you might have put in too many raspberries or too many strawberries, and just, just like with the milk, you've got a bigger mass. and you should be sorted. Those are all things to do with the inside, to do with the ice cream mix itself. There's some things that could have gone wrong with the freezer part. Perhaps you didn't add enough salt. When you look into your cup, though it's very hard in the cups, in my transparent cup it's much easier to see, but you should be able to see that there's some salt there that hasn't dissolved. Anyway, if you don't think you've got too much milk, and you don't think you've got too much sugar, and you don't think you've got too much flavour, then I would say try some extra salt. So let's go for two more spoons, make sure they go on the outside, and put those two spoons of salt in. The final thing that it might be, is that you have too little ice. If you can't see any ice in your freezer, that means you haven't got enough. So get a couple more ice cubes and put them in and do another shake. I'd say count to 50. And you might need, if you're putting in more ice cubes, you might also need more salt. So I'd go two ice cubes, two spoons of salt, for good measure, and shake that. Don't forget, hold it at the top for your shaking and count to 50. Hopefully that, We'll get you delicious ice cream.